The momentum of a body is the product of the body's mass and velocity. The mass has to be in kilograms and the velocity has to be in meters per second. In this example, you just need to be careful that you're using the correct units. So the mass has to be in kilograms and the velocity has to be in meters per second. One formula for working out the impulse that acts on a body is to work out the product of the force that's acting in newtons multiplied by the time that the force is acting in seconds, although this formula isn't actually on the further mechanics exam. Another and more useful way of working out the impulse acting on a body is it's equal to the change in the momentum of the body. And this is a, a formula that is definitely going to be on the further mechanics exam. So in this example, we can work out the impulse that's acting on the body by using the equation I equals FT. Again, remembering that will not be actual on the real exam, but it's uh, useful in this particular question. Having worked out the impulse in the first part, we can then use the fact that impulse is equal to change in momentum to work out the final velocity and therefore the final speed of the object. The impulse momentum principle can also be applied when an object hits a surface. And in this case, the impulse will always be acting away from the surface and that's the direction that you take as positive for your velocities. In this example, you just need to be careful that the impulse is acting away from the wall. So that's the direction we have to take as positive. So the final velocity will be positive, but the velocity that the ball approaches the wall at will be negative. Once again, we can use the impulse momentum principle in this example. The impulse will be acting away from the footballer's head. So the velocity after the heading will be positive, but the velocity before the footballer heads the ball will be negative. <laughs> 